Are you looking into some help with the 2019 FRQ questions? Well, you've come to the right place. In this video, we're going to tackle how to correctly go through and explain question number one from the 2019 APSAS exam. All right, here is the first part of the problem. The sizes in square feet of the 20 rooms in a student residence hall at a certain university are summarized in the following histogram. So let's make sure that we understand how to read a histogram. So remember, we call these bins left-handed. So for this first bin right here, this would be for any room that had a square footage of 100 up to 150, but not equal to 150. So it would be from 100 to 149.9999999. And we see that three of the 20 rooms fell into that range or that bin. Um, here's another example. This bin right here would be for any uh, bedrooms that fell, or any rooms, it says 20 rooms, uh, from 250 to up to 300 square feet. So it'd be 250 to 299.99999 square feet, and seven of the 20 rooms fell into that range. Okay, so now that we understand how to read a histogram, it's pretty simple. Now let's answer a question. Anytime you are shown a graph like this, Oftentimes, the very first question asked is to describe the distribution that you see. So, of course, that is question A. Based on the histogram, write a few sentences describing the distribution. Now, I want to emphasize it says based on a histogram. Because we're basing our answer here fully on the histogram, we cannot give specifics. So, no one expects you to give a, an actual median value or an actual mean or an actual standard deviation, any of that stuff. We're, we're purely talking here based on what we see. So really roughly here, we want to make sure that in our description, we talk about shape, center, and spread. And if there are any potential outliers, we would mention them. Now, based on what I'm looking at, I don't see any major outliers jumping out at me. I don't see any values that seem to be far away. So I'm going to go ahead and say there's no outliers just based on, again, looking at the graph. But for the shape, I do see a bimodal symmetric distribution. I see these two kind of clusters of data. And, you know, if you were to draw a line down the center, we would see that the left side and the right side do kind of mirror each other. Not a perfect symmetry here, but we definitely see some symmetry here based on the two uh, bimodal graphs here, the two different chunks on each side. Um, in terms of the center, I'd actually probably talk about the fact that there is an overall center somewhere between 200 and 250. But we also, because of these two clusters, we seem to have a, a lower center cluster, maybe around 150 square feet, and a higher cluster center, maybe around 300 square feet. Somewhere, you know, give or take, just being really roughly approximate based on only looking at this histogram. And then the spread of the data looks like it goes all the way from a low of around 100. We don't know if there's any rooms that were actually literally exactly 100, but that does is where our data begins. And then up to potentially as high as 350. So here's my quick write-up, just trying to be real nice and neat about that. Uh, the distribution of the sample of room sizes has a shape that is bimodal and symmetric. I want to note there that don't just say it. Don't ever use a pronoun until you've defined what that pronoun is. So what am I talking about? Um, well, the distribution of the sample of room sizes. So um, now later on, I could use the word it, but I got to make sure in the beginning, I definitely talk about the, 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 co you know, the, uh, the topic of this entire distribution is room sizes, right? The sample of my room sizes. So here I'm saying the shape is bimodal and symmetric. Next comes the center. I wrote that the center of the distribution, again, is around 225 square feet. But due to the bimodal shape, there's a cluster at the low end that's the center of 150 and a cluster at the high end with a center of around 300. Again, just rough approximations there, nothing too exact. And then the distribution is spread roughly from 100 to 350, which gives it that range of about 250 square feet. Pretty simple explanation there. Just make sure you write in full, complete sentences, nice and neat. All right, part B gives you some summary statistics. So be careful. This is part B, right? So these summary statistics should not be used in part A at all. Part A wanted me to give an answer solely based on the distribution seen in the histogram. All right, so here we give some more information, mean, standard deviation, min, Q1, median, Q3, max, all this fun stuff. And it says, determine whether there are any potential outliers in the data and then use the following grid to make a box plot of the data. Now, I cannot make a box plot until I first identify outliers. Now, there are two ways to identify these potential outliers. We could use the fence method or we could use the um, two standard deviation rule. But... Because I actually want to draw a box plot, 
When you're drawing a box plot, it's the fence method that is officially the way that you should be checking for outliers if you are going to find an outlier for a box plot. So let's walk through that fence method. So I'm going to identify outliers using the upper and lower fences. The upper fence is found by taking Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. So I did have to calculate the IQR real quick. It was taking Q3 minus Q1. I got 118 for that. So Q3 is 292. Add 1.5 times that IQR. Use a calculator for this. Do not be afraid. And we get 469 square feet. Now, the max of the data, according to our summary statistics, is 315 square feet. So obviously, there's no data at all higher than 469 because the highest value we have is 315. So that means there's no larger outliers on that high side. So there's no rooms over that value, so no outliers on the high end. The lower fence is Q1 minus 1.5 times that IQR. Again, IQR is Q3 minus Q1. We got that to be the 118. So I took Q1, 174, minus 1.5 times the IQR, and I got negative three square feet. Obviously, you can't have any rooms that have a square feet less than zero, so that doesn't even make sense. And then furthermore, my min was 134 square feet. Again, that was given to me in the summary statistics. So obviously, if the min is 134, there's clearly not going to be any rooms less than negative three, so there's no lower outliers as well. So there's officially no outliers in my data, which makes drawing the box and whisker plot really easy. So the five number summary is the min, the max, Q1, Q3, and the median. First thing I'm going to do is put a nice line at the median of 253.5. So again, we're just being approximate with this one. So here's about 253.5 right there. Um, right between 240 and 260 is 250. So notice I tried to go a little bit to the right. Not perfect at drawing straight lines with this computer program here. Sorry. All right, Q1 is 174. So again, that's going to be pretty close to 180. Uh, 170 is right in the middle there. So I'm going to go a little bit more. Q3 is 292, so that's going to be just short of 300. And then I'm going to connect all of that together for my box. Now, since I don't have any outliers, that simply means my whiskers go to the max. So 315 is going to be right around here. So I'm going to make my whisker, my upper whisker, go to that max. And my lower whisker is around 134. That's roughly around here. And voila! I am now officially done with that box plot. There we go. It's really that simple. And just remember, just as a side note, each of these chunks, lower chunk, left of the box, right of the box, and the upper section, all contains 25% of my data. Again, the quartiles and the five number summary breaks your data down into these 25% chunks. So a wider portion does not mean more data. It just means the data there is more spread out. Now, the final question says, what characteristic of the shape of the distribution of room size is apparent from the histogram, but not the box plot? The bimodal shape. So in the histogram, we clearly see the bimodal shape, the two chunks, lower and higher. Maybe, uh, maybe it's like guys' rooms and girls' rooms. Maybe girls' rooms are a little bit bigger. So we see a chunk around the girl rooms, lower, lower chunk there at the guy. The guy rooms are a little bit smaller. I mean, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. But we clearly see that bimodal shape. In the histogram, let me show you that again. There it is. And when we made that box plot a moment ago, um, we did not see that. We, we did. We don't see two chunks there. We just see the spread of the four quarters of the data. We don't actually see that bimodal shape in a box plot. So that's it. Actually, a really easy number one question. I think it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, nothing too difficult there. Just make sure you're answering the full sentences and never using pronouns until you actually define what they are. So always talk in context. Don't forget units on the numbers, square feet, and all that kind of stuff when you're working with quantitative data. All right, that's it. See you guys later. Hopefully you watch more videos on solutions to the 2019 and other years AP Statistics exams.